Hey guys, I have here a 12 volt, seven amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Vatver. This is a very tiny battery, perhaps one of the smallest we've taken a look at on this channel. One of my viewers had asked if I can do a tear down of this battery in particular to see how it's built. I guess they also have a six amp hour version. I only picked up the seven amp hour version, so I won't be able to compare the two. I don't expect this to be super interesting, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. Um, I did run a capacity test. It came in at 7.4 amp hours. I used the iCharger X6 and I discharged at a 0.2 C rate, which is approximately 1.4 amps. We're just gonna take a very quick look at the specification of this battery and then we'll jump to the teardown. As stated already, this is a seven amp hour battery. Charge voltage is 14.6, that's normal. The maximum continuous charge and discharge is seven amps, which is a one C rate. Recommended is 1.4 amps or 0.2 C rate. That is what we tested at. And we see our temperature operating ranges here. This is not listed as having any sort of low temperature charge protection, so I'm not expecting any. So there's a small pack of cells inside. I am fully expecting them to be cylindrical cells. I'm not expecting pouch cells or anything like that. All right, and there's our cells. They are pretty big. They're definitely not 18650. They might be 26650s. And there's our BMS on the top. That is perhaps the tiniest. And uh, here's my hand for comparison, how tiny that BMS is. Uh, but it only needs to support seven amps, so I guess that's all you need. And honestly, that heat sink on top is probably overkill for seven amps, if I had to guess. All right, here we can see a little bit more of the BMS wiring. These white leads and this block lead are going to be the balance leads. Uh, they are coming down to some nickel strip and they're soldered into place as we would expect here. Um, the heat shrink is a bit loose. You can see this one's not even really shrunk on. And uh, this wire did come off as I was pulling it apart, so that was my fault. The main positive and negative conductors here are 16 gauge silicone insulated wiring with a 200 degrees Celsius insulation rating. They do look kind of tiny here, but they are plenty large for 7 amps. Again, this is only a 7 amp hour battery. And on the other side of the battery here, we do have a thermal switch. This is not a temperature sensor, it's a thermal switch for 75 degrees Celsius. If this battery does get too hot, either charging or discharging, this uh, thermal switch should shut down the BMS and prevent any further damage. Uh, there are eight cells here. They are wired in groups of two in parallel, then wired in series to make a 12 volt battery. Since this is a seven amp hour battery, each of these cells would need to be 3,500 milliamp hours. Uh, the welding is very nice. I see each cell was hit three times for a total of six spot welds there. I don't see any of the weld points loose or burnt. A few quality things that do stand out to me are that they use nickel strip that has the slotted space in, and that just helps create a better weld the way the uh, current flows during the welding process. Additionally, they did use insulative adhesive rings on the positive side here, which provides an extra level of protection from this nickel strip resting against uh, the top of the cell, the ring around the positive side is going to be negative. So in any cylindrical battery, there is the concern of the nickel strip resting on the top of the cell and rubbing through the heat shrink, shorting it out. This insulative disc just provides an extra level of protection. All right, I fully separated all of these cells uh, from the very sharp bits of metal. And uh, they are very plain and generic cells. There are no markings whatsoever on them. So I did remove the heat shrink from one of them just to see if there's anything else under it. And there is a marking here that says SBHKAC. Uh, doesn't mean anything to me. Couldn't find anything online about it. But one other thing that was of interest to me, and let me find a non-conductive pointing object here, is the top lid is welded in four different places. You can see it welds here, 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 and here. So I've not seen that before. The only place I've seen tops welded on like that was with the Tesla cells that were recycled. Uh, I'm certainly not saying these are recycled cells by any means. I'm just pointing out that uh, this welding is a point of interest to me. So otherwise they look like great cells. I don't see any signs at the weld points that they were used. Typically in a used cell, you can see the weld points from the prior application. However, each one only has three pairs of weld points, which is exactly what we would expect. I don't see anything that may have been left over from before, so. And I did pop the cover off the BMS here just so we can take a quick look. And once again, look how tiny this thing is. You can see they only have two FET transistors soldered on here. This will be the on off switch for the charging and discharging. And you can see all these empty pads they have left here. So if they wanted to build this BMS with a greater current capacity, all they need to do is solder on a few more transistors there. And on the right hand side here, we can see this chip is gonna be the main control circuit. We have four resistors here along the bottom. These are going to be the passive balancing resistors and then four transistors to control these resistors. 
So if it senses one of these cells is over voltage and needs to balance, one of these transistors will flip on and pass current to this resistor that will bleed it off as heat. Uh, we do have a large resistor here that's going to be a shunt resistor for measuring the current. Yeah, not, not too much else to see here. So hopefully that does help get some of the information you were looking for. I know I didn't directly answer the question as to the differences between the six and seven amp hour battery. Um, the concern with cells like these are, you know, I have no idea what model, what brand these cells are because they are so generic. Uh, what, what we want to avoid really is having a seven amp hour battery that didn't test right and they're now marketing it as a six amp hour battery with the exact same cells inside. Um, again, I'm not saying that's what they're doing. I'm not suggesting that's what they're doing, but, but it's a lot easier to pull that kind of stuff off when you have generic cells like this, um, as opposed to the aluminum case prismatics we're used to, which have QR codes stamped and you can tell by the size and the form factor exactly what that cell is supposed to be. Uh, so as far as I'm concerned, this is a good battery. I don't see anything to say otherwise. Um, I don't know why they have a six and a seven amp hour version, uh, but you know, if you're buying a battery this small, you're likely looking at it for a specific application. And considering the six and the seven amp hour versions are the same physical size, I would definitely go for the seven amp hour version to spend the extra dollar or two or whatever the difference is. It's even possible and perhaps more possible that the seven amp hour is just a new version of the previous six amp hour battery. Anyway, I hope that was interesting. Hit that like button before you go and thanks for watching.